Well, for one thing, the average geriatric patient, about 80% of them have some chronic illnesses that they live with day to day. They take a lot of medication. Studies have shown that in a 30-day period, uh, there were studies that done that showed that they had taken uh, a lot of medicines, three or four medicines a day. And so because they take a lot of medicines, with all those different medicines, there are drug-drug interactions that can lead to, and this, you can get unintentional misuse and abuse just because one takes so many medications. So that makes it a little bit uh, difficult to treat. And also you have uh, studies have shown that with the geriatric population, a lot of times they are getting medications from their family and friends in addition to their medications. There's a potential for elderly patients to misuse and abuse their medications because they are taking so many. And I do drug, urine drug screens on elderly patients just like I do young people because you would be surprised at the number of that you would see that's not taking the medication that you prescribed because they got them from other people. And so that leads to abuse and misuse because they might take a little bit of their husband's uh, hydrocodone and they were on oxycodone. And so then there's the tendency for abuse and misuse in the elderly. One of the things is we know that in the 1970s there was a running craze and people got really involved in doing running and now that they're older they have some of the benefits in their joints from joint pain. As you well know, obesity is on the rise here in the United States and that is a contributing factor for hip, back and knee pain as well. Some people were involved in contact sports at an earlier age and as they age this had uh, some impact on it. And then people are sedentary at some points when they're getting older and movement enhances less pain. I think that what has happened with this opioid crisis is that the message is complex. And if you want people to follow something, you have to make it simple. I think most of us had the experience of seeing your mother or your grandmother make a pie. So you understand that a pie doesn't have one ingredient. If you make an apple pie, it has what? Sugar, nutmeg, cinnamon. But what happened in pain management, people think that pain management is synonymous with opioids. And so they do one ingredient. Everyone was getting a script for opioids. And so the reason I do the pie is because I like my patients and primary care doctors that I talk to to understand if you reflect upon grandmother, grandmother knew best that we had to have more than one ingredient and that opioids, insets, physical therapy, injections, and braces are different ingredients. And if we blend them together, we do what grandmother had, a good pie. I have something that I've created, a system called the Bragg Factor. And I created that because in Virginia Beach, it's a military town. And when I first started practicing there, people didn't remember my name. And elderly patients would say, you mean like the Army base, Bragg? So I created Bragg Factor a number of years ago to move people from a state of pain to function. And it's five steps. And it starts with beginning with behave as if. I want people to behave as if they don't have pain. That is the center of what Bragg Factor does. It combines motivational interviewing and the as-if principle. So you're going to imagine as if you don't have pain, and it's a five-step system. But the most important thing, and it ends up with gratitude. I have some patients to keep a gratitude journal. Because when you're in pain, and maybe you have problems with your job and your family and your social interactions, there needs to be something that you can start your day off with that's positive, that you're grateful for, rather than getting up saying, I'm hurting again today. And I find that that helps to move people from focusing on pain to function when they look around at things that they can be grateful for.